My name is Linda Vine, and I'm the business manager for the Special Operations Warrior Foundation. The Special Operations Warrior Foundation is a 501c um, that we take care of the children left behind uh, when a Special Forces uh, personnel is killed. And what we do is we send them to college, we pay the tuition, the room and board fees. It was started in 1981 uh, when the Iran, con or Iran hostage um, mission failed and nine guys were either killed or incapacitated severely. And they, the members of that mission, Desert One, passed a hat and started this foundation and said, or started this collection and said, we're gonna send these children to college that had just lost a parent. So it has evolved and improved. And in after 2001 on 9-11, they decided they were going to cover every special forces, special operations uh, personnel. Main goal is to educate and to just give the children of the fallen, give them that education that we feel that every special operator wants for their children. I'm Master Sergeant John Masson. And what else did you say? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, I I've been in the service for 16 years and I was assigned with Bravo Company, 3rd Battalion, 20th Special Forces, uh, ODA 2325, where I was the senior medic. Have your injuries affected your family? For sure. Um, you know, I am, I'm not as easily able to go do things for myself as I was before, um, so there's a lot of times where we don't go do things because it can be a hassle. Um, and just dealing with, you know, everyday life of a, of a triple amputee, it's not so easy. And the kids adjust to it well. Um, you know, it, it, it's affected us that we've had to change, but it's been an effective change. The prosthetics, uh, you really don't, you don't even start uh, the fitting process for the prosthetics until every single wound is closed on your body. Um, otherwise, you can, that can lead to an infection as they are um, fitting you for your socket. What we see here is pretty much the final product of the prosthetic where it's a computer knee and this is the socket that the style and design that we've been working on for at least over a year and it's the most comfortable that it's ever been. With my injuries I am a hip disartic which means I have no femur whatsoever. So therefore, this little bucket has a strap that comes around my body. I sit my right butt cheek into here, and then the strap comes around the body, and I attach it, and it basically just holds onto my hip. And then on my left leg, which the prosthetic is also behind me, it's a regular socket that just goes over my leg, and I fit into it well. And what these do are these are knees but when you're first beginning to learn how to walk they put you as low to the ground as you can get because the higher you are and the more you weigh the more unstable you can be and you're literally think about it, you're standing on you know prosthetics so you know your center of gravity is a lot different than as if you were using your own leg muscles to stand so you can't control what's happening beneath you as you can see from beneath me I have all that distance so when I stand up I'm using arm crutches to keep myself balanced well I have to work myself up to these knees um, so that's why they start you low to the ground so you learn your center of gravity and if you fall over you're not falling far and, and it's easy to recover and get back up on your prosthetics so that's that's electronic and it connects to your nerves no, it doesn't connect to the nerves, it just, for the hand, uh -huh. the hand moves by muscle contraction. Okay. So whenever I uh, come downward in a, in a fast motion, I just went up fast, down fast. Now I can grab something 
and then transfer it over and then lift it up and then I just relax, I don't do anything and that this hand goes back into a resting. Yes, this, this was the first thing that uh, we had started working on. It was, it had to be the first thing because I was starting to develop um, a carpal tunnel and my shoulder was starting to hurt real bad because I was using my right arm, which is my non-dominant arm for everything. So the first thing that was healed up, thank God, was my arm. It was totally closed. We casted it and within um, a week and a half, two weeks, maybe even less than that, I was already beginning to grasp things for it. The, the ones that I do pick up on, I picked up scuba diving, uh, so I was, I was already scuba certified, but I had to go and get recertified with the new condition I'm in, so I like to do that. Um, and I also like to swim and hand cycle with the bikes. And uh, you get to go do marathons and soldier rides and it's just a really excellent way to, to keep in shape, you know. Uh, my name is Jonathan Masson. I am Destina Masson. I am Ethan Masson. I am Morgan Masson. And I am John Masson. When your dad came back, how did you feel? Um, I felt like really upset and happy at the same time just to know that he was alive and um i was at first i was upset because my mom well actually my dad didn't want me coming to see him because he was afraid that i was going to be scared to see what he looked like but i was like no i'm gonna go see him because i want to see him for the first time since what was it July. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. July. For three months. Um, and so I just really missed him because I'm a daddy's girl, so <laughs> I especially missed him. So I just felt really, really happy. There was a lot of uh, there was a lot of mixed emotion going around just with the whole family and the whole situation. Um, I was definitely eager to see him and how he was doing and what his condition was and at the same time away from the hospital there was just so many things to be done. It's definitely brought the family closer and that you know what we've been through just moving, changing houses, traumatic injuries, recovery it's, it's definitely brought us all together and made us more of a close-knit family. But where do you guys think you would be right now without this, this organization and none of this was available to your reach? Separated. <laughs> <laughs> Separated. Well, because the kids would be some one place because they would have to go to school and then we wouldn't be able to afford it. So we would it would be I would be here and then they would be with a family member. So we would all be the kids would be not here. You know, because it's not conducive for three kids to live in a, you know, a, I don't even know how would you say it, almost like a hotel room. I think the organization, it's, it's extremely comfortable to know that, you know, somebody has your back and, you know, you don't have, you, you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, after I was injured, I remember, you know, being a guardsman, I have solely relied on deploying and, and going on orders. That was my income to stay as, on active duty status as long as possible. Um, after I was injured, you know, didn't even realize at first how much the organization in our country had my back. You know, I started instantly thinking, oh my goodness, I'm not gonna ever be able to work again. How am I gonna be able to provide for my family? Um, that thought is so far away from me that it's, it, it's not even an issue. And I know, you know, with foundations like this, that, that we'll be taken care of, the children will be taken care of, and future children will be taken care of. And it's just a, a, a wonderful feeling to know that, that you don't, that your kids will never, ever go without. It's wonderful.